Hey everybody, welcome to 39 Minute Workout with David. Today we're talking about one of the coolest exercises there is in kettlebells, and that's the Turkish getup, or as one of my clients used to call it, the Turkish prison getup, because he hated this move, because it kicks his butt. But you're gonna love it, and I'm gonna teach you how to love it, and why you should use it, especially as a warm up, or for those of you who need to get stronger and more coordinated in your hips, core, and shoulders. This is gonna help you get safer, joints so that you can work out more more effectively without getting injured. So, Turkish get up, I will admit, can be a bit of a brain teaser. Uh, and the most important thing is that you enter this with a good attitude and learn how to do it step by step and don't beat yourself up. Uh, I don't think it's all that tough to do, but I think people, it's like learning a language, you just gotta do it step by step. I think people get ahead of themselves and just outside, oh, I can't learn it. I'm gonna teach you piece by piece so that hopefully you can feel like, oh, I get it piece by piece. It's not too bad. I will say to you, please learn this without a weight in your hand. If it helps you to hold something, you could hold a shoe, a, rag, a water bottle, just to hold something. Because it is useful to simulate having something in your arm because your arm through a Turkish getup needs to be vertical the entire time you work. So when I learned kettlebells, and was certified, we actually had a shoe, sat on our knuckles, and we had to keep that thing balanced. I probably wouldn't start with the shoe balance on your knuckles because it'll frustrate the hell out of you because every little angle will knock it over, but holding something is a good idea. When you've got the moves down, then and only then do you grab a light press weight, and it could be a dumbbell, but I prefer the kettlebell, and actually start doing the drill the way it was designed. Now, I'm gonna teach you step-by-step step how to do a half get-up and a full get-up. I want everybody, at least, to be able to do a half get-up. Even my clients into their late 60s can do a half get-up because it's very, very good at teaching some functional coordination of your core, which will make you move better and more safely. When you get past the bridge position, which is the half get-up goes from your back all the way up to, not like that, piece by piece, up to there, and then return back. The full get up goes all the way to the stand up position. So let's talk about this. I'm not gonna use a bell to start out with. I'm gonna take this piece by piece. Now I'm facing you, so you're gonna have to listen to my cues, not pay attention to what side you're looking at, because this is my right hand, okay? So I'm gonna face you, and if you're confused by watching it, then listen to it and take those cues. But do watch how I generate power and what's happening before you try to do this, especially with a bell, okay? So the setup for the Turkish getup is flat on my back with my feet out in a slight V, and then I pick my right knee up, and my, sorry, my left hand comes out. Now what people do wrong in this is they put their arm at a 90 degree angle. I'll tell you why that matters, and that is because when you get to the third step and you're in the bridge, your arm's gonna be too far behind you in an unsafe position. So I want you to take this thing to 45 degrees, bam, okay? So if I was laying flat, my legs and my arms are out like that, slight V. That's where I want you to be, all right? So, my head is flat on the ground now. The first move is you're gonna drive with this hip and pop up to that elbow. Drive with this hip, pull this elbow under you. Now, you, this really clicked for me when I realized that you really don't generate power by crunching, you generate power by being like a door and I'm driving with that leg. So see my core, all it's doing, imagine this is four points of a door, my shoulders and my hips, and this door stays totally straight. All I'm gonna do is take this right foot and push off with it. Now when I push off with that and I pull my elbow hard, like under me at the same time, I pop up in the air. You know you did it right when you pop up in the air. You know you did it wrong when you go and this leg flies up in the air. You will see people do this where they, they don't get where the power is coming from and they're trying to pull like a crunch and this leg shooting up in the air fishing for, for leverage. So try that with me. Macarena style, right? Make yourself into a door, push this foot and literally just drive off the hip with that guy. Drive, drive, okay? Once you've gotten that feeling, now I want you to take this arm that's a 45 degree angle and I want you to, you can put your arm up in the air like this, as if you're holding a kettlebell, or hold a water bottle in your hand, okay? Drive with this hip, pull with this elbow. Drive with the left hip, pull with the left, right hip, pull with the left elbow. Okay, so, 
One, two, three, drive and pull. Good, did your left leg pop up in the air? If it didn't, you did it right, great. From this point on, I'm not moving my arm. This is important, this is why I had my arm at a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna take this fist and I'm gonna shove it to the floor as a palm. I did not do this. I did not fish backwards with my arm. Again, I'm gonna put my arm in a bad position. So if you start in the right place here, drive and pull, and now leave it there and push right from that spot. I'll show you why next, it's gonna make sense. So now my arm, all along, this is why I want you to hold something, and it stays vertical through the whole plane of this movement. Now I'm gonna drive my belly to the sky. Boom, and I nail that position. My belly is to the sky, my hip is all the way locked out, and look where this arm conveniently is. I haven't moved it yet, and if you watch me, from this side, my arm is conveniently straight under my shoulder, which is the safest place for it to be. That's why the arm starts at 45 degrees, folks. So let's put that half get up together. That's the three parts of the half get up. Right legs up, arms 45 degree angle. I'm gonna drive with the hip, pull the elbow. One, two, three, pull. From here, I'm gonna push up on the palm without sliding it behind me. And I'm going to drive the belly button to the sky and my arms should be in a straight line from one palm to the other. Now I'm gonna sit. Now I'm gonna to go to my elbow. And now under control, like you're undoing the door, I'm gonna to lower to my back. Great, good job. Let's do half get up, other side. Left leg is up, right arm is down. 45 degree angle, not 90, okay? Number one, let's practice like a door. Drive with a hip. Get that experience first. You wanna cross your arms so you don't cheat, right? The arms will take away the, the chance to cheat. You're not gonna crunch. Drive with the hip, this arm's shoulder stays pinned to the ground. So again, now, I'm gonna drive with the left hip, I'm gonna pull with the right elbow. One, two, three, pop. Okay, from here, I'm not moving my hand behind me, I make a fist, I push up. From here, I drive my hip to the sky, and if I did it right, I'm in a nice straight line from my hand all the way up to my hand. Belly button's high to the sky, not drooped like this. Good, sorry, undo it, sit, elbow, and back. I always say a good Turkish getup should be staccato, which means choppy, right? It's one, pause, two, pause, three, pause. It's not, it's not, that's not a Turkish getup. The Turkish getup is one, hit, two, three, all right? Each step is a pause and a pause and a pause. Even on the way down, it's one, one, two, three, okay? I see people sometimes want to go here to the palm and here to the floor. It's not. It's one, two, okay? Let's do the full get up now and then I'll show you one rep on each side with weight. So full get up. I'll show you the trickiest position is going to be one, two, and three. We're good so far, most people. The next position is the hardest one. You're going to take this left leg and hip and you're going to slide it under yourself until you're at a 90 degree angle like this. Hip to knee and to hand. This should look like 90 degrees. I don't know why, but this step is the one that people have a hell of a time with. I pick my torso, right? I'm high. If I'm high enough, all I'm gonna do is take my belly pointing to the sky-ish, and I'm gonna point it sort of to the floor. Not exactly, but you got the idea. So, in the air, I'm gonna take my hip here, and I'm gonna swing my whole torso and my hip out of the way. This is the hardest part for me to teach people. A lot of times it's because people don't have their hip high enough so it's in the way and a lot of times what they're trying to do and they do wrong is they're here and they just they try to leave their hips in their belly and they're like this is awkward well hell yeah it's awkward you didn't turn your hips and your hips have to come along for the ride I wouldn't think about your foot and your leg as much as this turning okay so I'm gonna swing and maybe you could practice that like right swing through swing your hip under you so when it's in the right position, and I wasn't set up well, it's a 90 degree angle. My hand's under me, my knee's under me, I'm here. From there, there's two ways to do this. I'm gonna teach you the easier to understand, but a little harder on the knee, because you're gonna twist. I'm gonna end up in a lunge facing towards this leg. So I'm gonna come up, boom, and the back leg twists as I face that way. Now I'm in a lunge position. From there, I'm just gonna stand without cheating, without bracing. From here, boom, to the sky. Right? Hips drive through. Now I reverse directions and I'm gonna step straight back. 
Okay, good lunge, I want space here. Number two, I'm gonna swing this leg, windshield wiper, back leg is gonna windshield wiper, my hip's gonna kick out, and I'm gonna put my hand under me. Do not put it back here, or you're gonna be all in an ugly straight line, okay? Here, windshield wiper, next to you, 90 degree angle, remember this box. From here, I'm gonna take my belly button, drive to the sky and kick my leg up, and in reverse order, sit, elbow, and back. Okay, left arm now, left arm. Okay, number one, elbow, number two, Sorry, I'm too close to my back. Up to my hand. Number three, bridge. Number four, what do we do? Belly buttons to the sky, we're gonna swing the hip. Take my right hip, swing it under me. Number four. Wait, that was four. Number five, to the lunge. Number six, stand. And reverse order, step back and down. Windshield wiper, hand goes next to you, not back here where it seems like it would. Next to you, bridge, sit, elbow, and back. Now the piece I didn't talk about the whole time is that eventually you're going to do this with a lump of steel over your head. And you're going to start off light. A lot of people out there are trying to do Turkish get really, really, really heavy on YouTube. I'm not a fan. There's a time and a place for that. I think there's better ways to be under tension under a kettlebell. I think the military press, the front squat, things like that are safer, safer and easier to go really strong to go heavy and get strong. I think personally for the clients I work with, I like the Turkish get up as a warm up or early in your kettlebell experience as a workup, a great pairing with swings. So if you're just gonna do a Turkish get up and swings, simple little workout, it will be one get up right, one get up left, 10, or 20, 10 to 20 kettlebell swings, okay? One get up, one get up, swings. One get up, one get up, swings. That's what you're looking for. I'm gonna do one get up on each side with a weight. I'm gonna show you how it's done completely, just piece by piece. You can just watch how I do it and then emulate that. Again, practice with nothing in your hand and then work up to a weight, okay? So I'm gonna do one on my right, one on my left, all the way up and down. It's on my right arm. I'm gonna roll fetal position. I didn't talk about this. I'm gonna roll in fetal position, grab it with both hands. Don't be macho and try to do this, don't wreck that elbow, okay? Roll, grab, I'm gonna pivot and press out. From there, where does my hand go? 45 degree angle. So, I'm gonna drive with the hip, pull with the elbow, and then I didn't do it right. Short chain, all right, undo that. I'm gonna try and do better. Drive the hip, oh, that was good, I popped, I nailed it. I know I did it right when that leg doesn't pop up in there. I was happy. Make a fist, push up, don't move that hand, bridge. Swing it under, to the lunge. Stand up, kneel, once she wipe her hand down, next to me, and bridge, sit, elbow, and back. Notice that arm stayed totally vertical. So, I'm gonna lower. Now I do, I will admit, some people take it over their head. I do it with two hands, I switch sides. Okay, now I'm on my left, fetal position. Grab with my second hand. I roll, hand goes 45. I'm gonna be the door. I'm gonna drive with the hip, pull with the arm. And I'm gonna push up to the hand without sliding behind me. I bridge, swing the hip under me, lunge position, and stand. From there, what do we do? We kneel. This is the part that I'll teach you later someday. Pivot, hand next to you. There is a nicer way on the kneecap than that. Bridge, and we sit, and we go to the elbow to our back. Lower to the floor. Awesome. Turkish get up. Great little warm up, maybe three to five per side max. Five to 10 minutes max. If you wanted to do it as a workout, uh, maybe I'll do that this week. Maybe I'll actually tape a little workout that I build around the Turkish get up for beginners. That would be a good one if you want to learn this move. Now, if you don't, feel like you could get the upper position if it's too hard on your knee. Some of my clients with knee problems will only do half get ups ever because it's too hard on their knee to lunge. You know, lunging with one belt like that and twisting on the kneecap, you gotta have good knees to do that. So um, half get ups or full get ups and then swings and some other stuff will put together a nice little beginner workout using the get up. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. Please be, be uh, in the comment section below as always. 
This is 39 Minute Workout with David. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell so you get warnings when I post new cool shit for you guys. And check us out at onlinekettlebells.com for my online 39 minute workout online program where we teach you all things kettlebell, fat loss, reshaping, primarily for women from their 30s to their 50s, 60s. That's who I love to work with. That's who I love to help. And uh, check it out. See you next time.